That is brilliant. And uh, your presentation seems to be up. Um, so if, if you're ready right. to go, I'll just kind of sit in the background and uh, give you a give you a warning when we're getting close to time. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a video or not. I have exactly the same background as Helen, if you can see it. There oh, it wow. Yeah, we can. Um, <laughs> fabulous banjos, by the way. Uh, right. So this is, uh, I think, possibly a little different from other people's presentations because it's more uh, based on reflective practice rather than actual research, to be honest. Uh, Laura and I um, are, you know, have, have actually done what we're talk, going to talk about and over quite a few years. And we thought that it was pretty relevant to this this talk here. So uh, that's it's working. Um, what I want to talk about is pair teaching and in computer science uh, and in computing and practice there there's, was a very trendy thing at one time called pair programming which is, is still there which is about people working together collaboratively to solve uh, the problems and, and sharing and things so it's not like working in a team it's, or uh, it's, as, as team teaching is where there's, there's lots of people teaching something um, and it's not meant to be evaluative. You're not meant to criticize each other. You, I mean, you, you can agree to criticize each other, but it's not really the point about what's what it's about. It's literally about working together. It's it's equal. It's supportive, and it's about sharing things. And uh, as I say, there's a reference at the top, not a fully done. It's in our abstract to Anderson and Bendix, who wrote about this a long time ago, a paper I wasn't aware of till very recently, uh, discussing this idea exactly in a computer science context as well. So I think perhaps this idea of working in pairs is maybe uh, a more thoughtful thing in computing, where it actually happens in industry and uh, is kind of more in the foreground of uh, our, our thinking than perhaps in other subjects. Um, as I say, it's not about teams, it's about working together in tandem. So why do we think it's a good thing to do? Well, uh, there's, there's, there's a mutualism. People work together, they grow together. Uh, you learn from the other person and they learn from you. Uh, you can introduce diversity because you can have uh, um, a mixture of people. Uh, Laura and I teach together. Um, I'm, I'm quite tall, she's quite short. She's a she and I'm a he and I'm old and she's young. And you get quite a lot of diversity into that. Uh, but you can also have diversity of opinion, of experience, all kinds of things like that that happen with it. So it's a, a very useful way to, to work in, in um, this, this sort of context. It also particularly smooths transitions between teaching staff and in another context where I was uh, pair teaching with somebody else, uh, that person dropped out and another teacher came in again and it made that transition much smoother. Uh, between because I had some consistent knowledge that we could share and they brought in a fresh set of opinions which livened up the class and all those kinds of things and that that works very well. The other thing I think where pair teaching works very well is that it helps with very large classes and this actually goes back to uh, somebody thinks we, there was a lot of discussion about eye contact earlier on that was mentioned and in the chat and in one of the talks if you're teaching a very large class you know several hundred students it's really hard to keep eye contact on all of them. Yes, we, you know, we were taught to scan and look round and all of that sort of thing. Um, but actually, if there's two of you, you can actually watch much more accurately what's going on. One of the person, I mean, I'm not seriously, we're not both talking at the same time. One person is, is, is watching and the other is talking and you swap backwards and forwards. Uh, they can monitor what's happening in the class. They can spot questions perhaps that are not visible in large classes it's often quite difficult to see if somebody's put a hand up or something like that so it can really work very well in that sort of thing and it's very dynamic because you can respond very quickly to things uh, somebody can jump in and say something or just you know influence what you're saying you give some extra experience uh, to, to do the to uh, to what you're teaching as you're going along of course there are going to be some negatives and these are the sorts of things that uh, people are going to say about it uh, but particularly um, the, the university administration I'm going to say here uh, 
uh, it's, it's expensive. It's resource intensive. Um, and you having two people teaching a large class is deemed inefficient. And uh, there's a tre tremendous concentration in universities now on efficiency. And I, it's, it's difficult to know. I mean, I understand the, the, the cost aspect of this, but actually the benefits, to me at least, seem to outweigh this, uh, n this cost analysis of things, which I think universities are far too uh, cost sensitive now uh, about things like that. Because actually, uh, it's, would those two people be teaching at the same time? Probably not, actually. So it isn't actually about a problem to have two people teaching in a class. It, they're not scheduled usually together. Um, and it perhaps gets away from having to have small you know, repeat teaching over several classes. You can get some things around it. So I don't think it's I, I, inefficient. I think it's uh, it could it is now nor do I think it's expensive actually. And of course, some pairs don't work. This comes back to what somebody was saying about earlier on. Leo was saying, I think it was uh, about enemies, um, or possibly critical uh, crit critical speakers on them. Uh, you don't want to pair two people together who don't get on. Um, though, to be fair, uh, interestingly, one of, uh, when I was pair teaching with somebody else, and this was more me down at the front talking and him at the back heckling me, um, one of the students leant over to him and said, um, you two really hate each other, <laughs> which is completely far from the truth. Um, because uh, we got on very well and we were good friends, but uh, you know, it was there was a lot of banter going on, and they simply didn't understand that. Uh, so it's uh, so that as a pairing, it worked very well, though perhaps the students didn't perceive that interestingly. Though I think that only happened once. But there are, I'm sure, you can identify uh, pairs of people in your your work who probably wouldn't work together very well uh, in those sorts of contexts. And actually, I'm having going to be really super quick here. That's pretty much all I wanted to say, because it's really go out there, find somebody you get on with, get in there and teach together, because it's a really good way of seeing other people. And people are talking, I mean, uh, Helen said something about peer, peer observation in the chat there. Uh, it, it is sort of peer observation, but because you're actually there, uh, it's it's much more actually like jazz improvisation when you're playing along, you're listening and you're responding. And that is actually what it's about. Uh, you have to observe because you have to be in the moment when the other person is talking and you have to pick up on things that are really important and that you're where you actually think, no, maybe they've said something wrong or maybe you have a different opinion and you can jump in on that. Um, so I think that's that's where I think this works really well. So I, you know, no matter what your uh, resource allocators say, I think you should really give it a try. It's a particularly good way of uh, passing on experience, getting new experience. Uh, again, I think it's it's uh, related. I think the old and young thing was very important. It's not so long since Laura was a student, so she's much more akin to uh, the students that we're teaching than, than I am. As I say, it's 50 years this week since I first became a student, so it was a very different uh, set of circumstances in those days. Uh, and I think I'll stop there. Fantastic. Thank you. I, I really personally love pair teaching. Uh, it's one of the things that I absolutely love doing, but it's it's one of the things that I often don't get a chance to do because, you know, everyone's always so busy, I think, is usually the kind of line for that the workload argument that you mentioned. Um, one of the things that's been kind of popping up repeatedly in the conversation pane uh, that I kind of love to get your thoughts on uh, are different people coming up with different ideas about what might constitute, um, I suppose you call it the perfect pair. Um, uh, and so we got some ideas from Rich about um, you might pick somebody that's kind of more teaching focused and someone that's more research focused and then have a balance between those two uh, points of view when you're looking at a topic. Uh, we got some, we got one from Paul who's saying that uh, uh, they paired up uh, individuals that would get on with each other but had very different ideas or different approaches. Um, and I suppose that's kind of feeding into your point as well, kind of have, having people that um, are demographically quite different. Uh, but I'm wondering if you kind of have any ideas about what makes the perfect, the perfect pair. Oof, it's it's difficult. I think they just happen. Laura and I get on really well, um, and uh, and we we tend to think the same sort of things. So I mean, I think that works. And we're perhaps not that different. Perhaps um, having somebody that's very different can be a bit difficult because uh, 
you, you there's a lot of disagreement and disagreement doesn't always look good in front of the class you can you can uh, show it as um, discussion of course if you're, you're careful but uh, people say no no that's not true that that doesn't work so I think people know who they'd work well with I think you have to trust people's feelings on these sorts of things I, I don't think you can just arbitrarily go around and allocate people and say you two work together because I don't think that's going to work uh, it's it's like mentoring if you've been a mentor with somebody sometimes you just doesn't work when you're you're mentoring somebody and you, and you may get on fine but the mentoring aspect of it just doesn't happen um, and and you have to say nah this didn't work and i think that's true with pairs as well have you also come across people who uh for example wouldn't work well in any pair uh, so we had a point which was that um, your, your kind of point to do with uh, helping out with eye contact or engaging people. Uh, if you have two people, you can kind of mm -hmm. engage the room, especially large classes. Um, we had a point that if you had somebody that's, for example, a really kind of expert performer and very lively uh, and have had all that kind of performance training, uh, they might be able to make everyone look and feel like they're being engaged uh, to the same level as a kind of pair uh, would. Uh, it's difficult. I think there are some people who don't work well in pairs. I think that's absolutely true. Um, they just just either aren't that way inclined or they just don't like working with other people. Um, I'm in computing. It's full of people who don't like working with other people. Uh, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a really difficult thing. I think you I think pairs will naturally aggregate and find themselves and uh, uh, and, and doing this sort of thing. Though actually, Laura just made a point to me in the, another chat room that we're sitting in. Um, it's about connecting with different students, uh, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So some people connect with certain students and others connect with others. So that's a good, actually, another good way of determining pairs if you can actually get different communications across to different sets of students, which is actually so important, uh, particularly in large classes where you know you've got a mix of people with different learning styles and things like that. And having two people together can actually work with that very well. But no, I don't have a magic formula for finding out who works in pairs. I've got a really selfish question if I can ask it as well, which is, um, do you have any kind of top tips on how to get around uh, workload issues or workload handlers or what, what are you going to call the people that say no because it takes too much time? Um, I tend to ignore them. <laughs> uh, uh, you can always just turn up, you know, there's nothing to stop you turning up. You may have a lecture scheduled, um, but you can always bring somebody along. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be timetabled that way. If, I mean, all right, if you're obviously if you're timetabled to have a clash, uh, that's not going to work. But if you've got something uh, scheduled and the other person hasn't and they want to come along and do it, why not? Nobody should you know what they're going to say. How are they going to know? Uh, uh, the uh, Laura's just saying to me, request to share the timetable as a cover in case they're sick. That's a good idea. Oh, that's very yes. good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very good one. That one. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I tend to be a bit of a maverick in that sense. I tend to ignore things like that. The workload models, workload models tend to be a bit of a joke anyway, because you always tend to be uh, uh, vastly over 100 percent. At one point, I had four times as much teaching load as anybody else in the department. So. Uh, uh, that I don't I don't hold much faith in workload models, but uh, yeah, just turn up, turn up and do it. That's the thing. It's like jazz. It's a session. Just come along. A very quick final question. I've had one coming through a kind of side channel. Um, um, is a pair the perfect number? Um, so you've got ones, we've got twos. Have you tried a triad or whether you would call a three? Um, I we did a little bit of three. I think three. Well, three is a crowd, you know, two is company. Um, uh, I think that three didn't seem to work very well. We didn't do it long enough to perhaps to, to get it up, but it starts to look a bit crowded down front. Um, and uh, it's, I know, I think two is a good number. Uh, I, I'm not, not saying three wouldn't work. I, I think you could make three work very well. Uh, Laura just commented to me, it was harder to send each other mind messages when there were three of us doing it. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> that's absolutely true uh, it was it's much more you, you're, you're looking at the class you're looking at the other person add another person into that who you've got to keep your eye on it's uh, gets to be quite difficult I think so I think two works well I'm not as I say I think three could be made to work but it's harder than two 
I stand. Thank you. Uh, thank you for Lindsay and Laura. Uh, I really appreciate uh, that session. That was a lovely one to take part on. Um, I'm going to hand over next.